The following audio is from a press roundtable for Jean-Pierre Darden and Luke Darden, the filmmakers behind Two Days, One Night. This audio features a roundtable interview with the film's lead actress, Marion Cotillard, and writer-director brother team, Jean-Pierre Darden and Luke Darden. Two Days, One Night opens in New York City, December 24, 2014, and expands to L.A. and beyond in January 2015. A written transcript of this audio can be found on filmcourage.com. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> bonjour, Maria. Enchanté. Bonjour. Um, was it difficult to do the Belgian accent for you? Um, e- yes or no? Ki- well... <clears throat> Kind of. I was because I didn't want to. I didn't want to have like a Belgium accent. I wanted to um, to have a flavor, and I needed it because my. I mean, all the other actors, and especially the the actor who plays my husband and and the the two young uh, actors who plays my kids, they have an accent, and I, it it is actually the first. One of the first things, if not the first thing, the Darden brothers asked me, it was to lose my Parisian accent. Um, when you're asked such a thing, usually, I mean, James Gray wanted me to have a Polish accent, or Guillaume Canet wanted me to have a, an Italian accent, or usually I work on... Oh, I had one here. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so you have a dialect coach and you work for hours, days, weeks, months, when you're lucky enough to have months. Um, but then here it was losing my French-Parisian accent, so I thought I need to replace it by something. Uh, another accent, I mean, we all have accents or we are robots, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So I thought, okay, I need to have a Belgium accent, but it is not what they asked me. Uh, and they're very precise in their demands. <laughs> so I knew they, they were not asking me to have a Belgium accent. But And then the month of rehearsal that we had was very helpful because I listened to all those people around me who had a different kind of Belgium accent accents and um, and not that it yeah I was I was kind of nervous that it would be too much or not enough and because I was working by myself no dialect coach this time uh, sometimes I got a little nervous about it uh, and sometimes they would say Oh no no! This is too, too much of a, of a, a Liegeois accent, and I was very happy about it. <laughs> but then I knew that I needed to reduce so it would not be disturbing, because some people in the audience know my face already, which was kind of new <clears throat> for the Darden brothers to work with a well-known actress. And um, and I knew that I really needed to fit in their world, but mm, that the accent shouldn't be disturbing for the audience. That was a long answer. <laughs> 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 Angela. Hi, Maria. Hi. Great job. Thank um, you. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Thank you. I just wanted to ask you, it was interesting that this movie is kind of like a road movie. Um, yeah. And it's also a, a reawakening of a romance because in the beginning, you know, they're not having sex. They, you know, they, they're sort of estranged and everything. And then by the end of it, they've come back together. So for you, I mean, how did you see this film when you first read it? When you read the script, what did you think of it? How did you picture it, like, you know, either genre-wise or maybe it defied a genre for you? What did you think? Um, <clears throat> when I first read the script, it resonated with uh, some deep questions and reflections that I had a year and a half before. Um, when I read a letter of someone who had decided to end his life because he was working in a company, and, and at that time, a lot of people in that company 
um, took the same decision uh, as this guy. So it was a big thing in France. And one of them left a letter explaining that he was putting an end to his life because he felt useless. And um, and some other, another person had kids too. And I started to really question, I mean, I've always questioned our society and the decisions and the how it functions or how it dysfunctions. But um, I was reading at the same time some... I was reading things about Indian tribes or African tribes, and never I read somewhere that an in individual in those tribes questioned uh, um, uh, his or her places in 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 the society. And um, so, of course, I came to the conclusion that we. Our society, the society we'll live in here, created isolation and this question that is, that should should sound crazy in a perfect world where everybody on earth has a place. Otherwise, this person wouldn't be here if this person didn't have a place and a purpose or, you know, well... And um, and so when I read the script the first time, it really like brought back all these questions and uh, reflections that I had, and it made sense for me to experience from the inside someone who feels useless and worthless. Thank you. Um, qu a quick question, sort of following up on that. Your performance is so it's such a subtle performance. It's not showy. And it's filled with a lot of like raw vulnerability and nuance. How did the rehearsal process kind of did that help with kind of nailing the subtle the subtleness of like working class mothers and stuff? Did that kind of help the rehearsal the five week rehearsal? Well, rehearsals uh, always help mm -hmm. uh, because you. Um, I remember when I started being an actress, I read this biography uh, from uh, Romy Schneider. I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with this uh, genius actress. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of her biography, she says she always worked a lot um, on preparing uh, for a role. And, uh, and she was kind of a model for me. She mm -hmm. is still, but... And she says, I'm going to work on a character and I'm going to explore 50 ways. Most of the time, the first way is the right way. But it's enriched by exploring the 49 other ways. Mm. And when you have the time to rehearse, you try things. And you can go wrong because you're not shooting. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, you, you, you're you going to try something different. And it's going to be richer because you've experienced what was not exactly what you're looking for, but then you experienced it. <clears throat> um, and especially when... Well, I always, I always need a, a, a preparation time because I love it, first of all. I love this process of exploring because when you find something, and it's, it's, like, it's like a gold searcher. You don't say that, a gold. I mean, when you search gold and you have the gold, you know, and then you're like suddenly, wow, that's it. Um, and you have time to digest to make it better. Mm -hmm. um, and I need that time because I, one of my favorite parts, if there is one, because I love the whole process, but it's when you start feeling the character in your body. Mm -hmm. 
and I I cannot work only on what's in her mind, what's what was her life before, which is something that I love to do. But when I start feeling <clears throat> that mm, the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I breathe becomes her. Mm-hmm. And, and then I see myself disappearing. Mm-hmm. And rehearsals is... It was the first time for me I did this uh, process of rehearsing with the directors and we rehearsed all the scenes on sets Mm -hmm. with the actors and even in costumes. Mm -hmm. It was not, this process of rehearsing was not focused on acting. Um, It was finding the dynamic of the camera because it was Mm -hmm. all sequence shots. Mm Sometimes you have a scene that lasts 10 minutes and we really had to create the choreography and, um, and the Darden's cinema is... There's, the rhythm is really, really important in their movies and they're very demanding. Um, I mean, in terms of rhythm. Sometimes I would have this scene... I, I, get off the bed, put my shoes on, and I put the left shoes, and when I put the right shoes, I burst in tears. We did it like 80 times, and sometimes it would happen on the left shoes or when I would put my foot back on the floor and they would come and they would say, that was great, but if you can really like burst in tears exactly when you put your shoes on. That was that, <laughs> that level of precision. Um, which I really, really loved. But, um, but then the rehearsal time was really like focused on finding the dynamic. And of course, finding the dynamic is also about acting because what you give gives a rhythm. And, uh, and, then, you, and then you try to do a beautiful cake with all those elements. Um, but then when you're on set... It's all about acting. Mm-hmm. Their focus on acting, which is heaven for mm-hmm. an actor. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I think, did I answer your yeah. question? Well, and more than that? Correct. <laughs> when you're on set, when you're going from <clears throat> a scene to scene, moment by moment, what's the key for you as an actress to actually stay in the moment, no matter what filmmaker or, mm-hmm. or a DP you're working with or, or scene partner you're working with? Is there a key that you found over the years that puts you right there? A good director. That's the key. Um, if I if I don't want to give because I'm not in a trust, I mean I don't trust the director. It's really really hard for me to give anything, and to to find the authenticity, to find everything I need to to give everything I have to give to a scene. So that's the first thing. And then... If I feel free, and if I... If there's a strong connection with the people I work with, I, it's not hard for me to, to, to stay in the character, I mean, but sometimes, I mean, sometimes I know that I need a process, um, I need time by myself before, uh, the day, um, when I did La Vie en Rose, for example, I always came, uh, an hour before the call, because I needed this hour to do stuff. <laughs> um, to get in. Um, but when I, yeah, when I feel free and, and, and trusted and I trust the people I work with, um, it's simpler. Karen, Hi. you said that um, you go so deep into a role sometimes that it's almost... Well, I try to. To come out, yeah. <laughs> That how was that for Sandra? How did you go into her, and then how did you come out 
of Sandra's whole psyche of the being nervous, the depression? Did you find yourself struggling to get um, out of Sandra? Thing is, as I find the process of getting in very interesting, I find the process of getting out very interesting too. <laughs> um, I didn't know before La Vie en Rose that I would have to find a way out. I thought it was a job and that after the last cut, I would go back to my life and go back to normal. I was, I was about to say, well, it might be that. Normal. <laughs> what is normal anyway? Um, but that was a very, very interesting process that took me a long time. And then I realized that I needed to do it for almost all the movies. And I never know how it's going to happen. So I'm always looking for this uh, experience. Um, it can take the form of someone who will tell me something and we're going to enter a discussion and then suddenly I will feel that it's going away. It's, it's really hard to explain. And um, But I learn a lot out of it. It's kind of hard to explain. And I never know how it's going to happen. <laughs> Jamie. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to follow up on a few things you were talking about before, about directors. Because you work with so many great directors, and, and different types of directors, from Woody Allen, Christopher Nolan, Tim Burton, it goes on and on. Working with the Dodens and their different style and approach to making films. What was that experience like for you, and what are you looking for from a director when you're working on set? Um, I, I need to work with directors who um, need more than anything to tell a story. I worked with directors and I found out working with them then that if they were there or in anywhere else it would make no difference. <laughs> and it was painful because I needed to be almost a matter of life or death. <laughs> you know. Because first of all when you when you do a movie it involves a lot of people who trust you and it's uh, and you will ask people to come to see what you want to say and if it's not something that you really need to say I'm not interested um, because it's too painful for me and it happened and and it was I was totally lost because I was with someone who who would who was not in the n n deep need to tell a story. So that's one thing. Um, the Darden brothers, something that I loved about, I loved everything. This is one of the greatest experiences, if not the greatest experience that I had on set with directors and the relationship that I had with them was total osmosis. Osmosis? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they always talk about the audience. When sometimes on set, audience is like a bad word. <laughs> They always talk about the audience, and that's what I love about their movies, because they take you somewhere, and they're going to surprise you, and they're going to move you, they're going to... I mean, I've seen all their movies, I love them all. For me, The Sun is a masterpiece. I don't know if you've seen this movie, but this is... I mean, for an audience, taking a road and then suddenly someone is going like and then you turn and the 
the story is totally different from what you thought entering the theater. And for 30 minutes, you think that, I mean, I won't ruin <laughs> anything if, if some people haven't seen this movie, but obviously you, you think something. You think that this guy is this kind of person, and then suddenly it's totally... It, 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 it unravels something totally different. I mean, as part of, the, of an audience, for me, it's like... It's what cinema is for, you know. And um, on the second day of rehearsals, they were talking about the audience, and that was funny because it was really new for me, and it was really like a little more freedom. They had already given me a freedom that was beyond freedom, but this was, I loved it so much. And they turned to me and they said, oh, you know, we talk about the audience all the time. And the first scene is, no, we don't want the audience to see your face as in almost all their movies. And, and, then, and then you're going to do this, and the audience will think this, and then they will be surprised by this information. Well, it's... I found it relieving. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know if I answered all yeah, your questions. We have time for one more um, question. So the ahead. classic ending question. Can I ask what you're uh, up to right now? What do you have lined up project-wise? I, um, I did a movie at the beginning of the year, uh, a British movie based on Macbeth. Um, so I think that's going to be released next year. Your Lady of Macbeth. I am. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> is it traditional telling? Super traditional. And we went to the purest Shakespeare you could find. Because sometimes they kind of adapt a little bit for people to understand. If you don't, it's normal. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it took me... <laughs> a long time to understand everything, <laughs> but I'm French. Um, <laughs> um, is that with Mac Michael Fassbender? Yeah. He's been yeah, yeah, yeah. And this director, it's his second movie, but this guy is gonna is gonna count. Um, Who's the director? Justin Kurtzel. He's uh, an Australian director, and it's his second movie. And. Um, so you're going to follow up this movie with a comedic movie, obviously. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> I would love to. Honestly, pff, when I accepted fun. my next movie, first of all, my boyfriend was like, oh, it's going to be a fun year. <laughs> <laughs> And then, well, already when, because I was not supposed to, to do a movie after the Darden Brothers movie because I was kind of um, exhausted. And then Justin came with this uh, offer and I always knew I would play Macbeth, but I thought it would be on stage and in French. And I thought, well, this is an opportunity that, it, that I cannot, you know, miss. And same boyfriend said, are you kidding me? <laughs> because he knows I want to do comedies. He's like, are you kidding me? Lady Macbeth. I mean, this must be a joke. And my next movie is not funny. Um, drama, 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 drama. It's um, um, a French movie from uh, a French uh, director, act. act Act she's an actress and a director. She's called Nicole Garcia. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it's not going to be a fun movie. But I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to... Did you have fun doing the bit in Anchorman too? Yeah. <laughs> I was so stressed out because I'm not used to do comedies. And when you're not used to do that, you never know if the level of what you do is too high or too low <laughs> and plus you're on screen with genius Jim Carrey and all those people who are just my heroes and I was um, yeah I felt 
I, I had fun, and at the same time, I was so stressed out that it, it kind of ruined a little bit of the fun, especially that I... Can I say that? I was supposed to shoot the next day, and they pushed the day before, and I was totally hangover. <laughs> um, <laughs> because the med ball was the night before. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I mean, I had so much fun, and I'm, I really wanted to do com uh, a comedy. I don't know if I would... I mean, I would have a lot of work, maybe, maybe more work than for a drama, because I'm familiar with mm -hmm. drama now. Um, but that would be, yeah, that would be a risk that I would love to take. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, bonjour. Hello, bonjour. Um, I love the movie. So wonderful. And it fits in line with a lot of your other similarly themed films. And I'm wondering what about her story was it that you wanted to tell? Because there's similar themes to working class and to family and value the value of money. So yeah. I'm wondering what about her story was it? The question is... Oui, mais je sais, mais quelle qu qu était la chose en particulier que vous vouliez raconter oui, oui. sur son histoire oh. Nous, on voulait raconter l'histoire d'une femme qui, euh, au départ, elle a peur d'elle-même, elle n'a pas confiance en elle, elle n'a pas confiance dans les autres non plus, puisque... At the start, we wanted to tell a, a story about a woman who has no confidence, who lacks confidence, first of all, in herself, and secondly, in others, I mean, because after all, all these other employees voted against her. Alors, on voulait raconter son voyage, donc de quelqu'un qui finalement va vaincre sa peur, elle va avoir confiance en elle, et tout ça grâce à son mari, aux deux premiers qui ont été solidaires, euh, Juliette et Robert, et grâce à ceux qui, grâce aux autres, à ceux qui ont été solidaires. Donc on voulait raconter, à travers ce voyage de cette femme, comment on peut encore créer de la solidarité. So we wanted to uh, talk about her journey, and a journey where she gains confidence through solidarity, first of all, with her husband, secondly with her co-workers who are in solidarity with her at the onset, Juliet and Robert, and then further along with the solidarity of the other workers that turn around and decide to work for her. And we wanted to tell that journey about her overcoming this lack of confidence and this fear that she had through this process. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. And? Um, uh, I, I was very curious about the, the challenges. Um, number one, I saw that you shot in chronological order, and I'm wondering if you can tell us about the challenges of that, as well as, do you always have that many rehearsals before actual shooting? Cela a beaucoup de... The challenges of working in sequence, and if you have more repetitions than usual. The work in sequence. The work in sequence. The challenge of that. Yes. And it's a long time. On a, on, on, répète, on a répété cinq semaines, on fait toujours cinq, quatre semaines. Ici, il y avait beaucoup de comédiens. Donc nous, on répète tout le film dans les endroits qui seront le décor. Et euh, il y a, cette fois-ci, il y a beaucoup de décors, donc il y a beaucoup de changements de lieu. Donc ça nous a pris cinq semaines de répétition avant de commencer, avant de commencer le, le tournage. We rehearsed for five weeks. We always rehearse for a lengthy period of time. And in this case, we had a lot of actors. So we always do the rehearsals on the locations where we're going to shoot. So all the blocking is done at the same time. No, so donc tous les déplacements, tous les placements ont déjà été faits avant que vous commenciez à à shooter. Les reportages, oui. Non, je vais continuer à répondre par rapport au long au long. I'm going to continue to to answer in terms of the long takes. Et euh, nous, on, enfin, ici, le, le film est construit seulement sous. C'est <coughs> vrai, chaque rencontre est un plan séquence. Parce qu'il nous a semblé que c'était euh, la meilleure manière de rendre compte 
de ce qui allait se passer, de ce, de ce qui se passait entre Sandra et des autres travailleurs. Et que ça allait permettre aux spectateurs de vivre dans le même temps que celui dans lequel la scène s'est passée. Ce sont des blocs de temps. Each um, sequence, a sequential shot is one encounter that Sandra has with um, other people or another individual. And we felt that it was important to have these long takes and these uh, encounters because that way the audience member can go through what Sandra's going through in the encounter simultaneously. Et pour, et pour nous, ce qui, est, enfin, ce qui nous intéresse aussi dans ce plan, dans, dans, dans les plans séquences, c'est qu'on a le sentiment, vrai ou pas, mais en tout cas nous, c'est ce qu'on pense, que ça permet au film de, qui est à côté plus vivant dans le film, que ces blocs de temps permettent, à, permettent, au, permettent au, au, au film de respirer. We feel that these sequential uh, takes allow the film to breathe, that they allow it to really live, that there's, that you have a feeling of real life happening in front of you. Merci. Um, I was going to ask the gentleman, um, this is a very universal film, especially in the past couple years there's been a recession in Europe, United States, other places. Um, I'm just curious, where you've shown this elsewhere, have you also had people come up to you, talk to you about their own experiences in terms of dealing with um, the situation of people having to fight for their jobs. Oui, bien sûr, comme vous dites, c'est une situation universelle. En tous les cas, c'est dans beaucoup de parties du monde qu'on se trouve avec des, des, des gens qui, sont, euh, qui ont perdu leur travail ou qui vont le perdre. Et pour revenir en même temps à ce que je disais, on raconte l'histoire de Sandra, mais en même temps, on raconte... Euh, l'histoire de la crise économique et notre film essaie d'être une réponse à cette crise. Well, of course, I mean, in a lot of places, we uh, we meet people that you know have lost their jobs and that are struggling with employment. And to come back to what we were saying before is um, in the film, we uh, part of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to say it's it's a response to the economic crisis. Et euh, que ce soit dans notre région ou, ou ailleurs, mais dans notre région, vraiment, euh, c'est une situation très préoccupante. Euh, hier, en, à Bruxelles, il y avait 120 000 personnes qui ont fait une manifestation dans la rue avec les syndicats pour, contre la baisse des salaires. C'est vraiment une réalité. Well, and it's true that in our region, in the locality of where we shoot, I mean, it's a very omnipresent uh, problem. I mean, it's 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 very present. And yesterday in Brussels, there in fact there was um, a um, march, a manifestation with 120,000 people that were crying out against the lowering of salaries. Mm. Et voilà. Okay. Thank you. Jamie. Bonjour. Um, Bonjour. I wanted to ask about casting Marianne. And uh, with an actress of her caliber, is there much direction that she needs, much adjustment, or does she basically direct herself? C'est que Marion, est-ce que avec une actrice qui est à son niveau, est-ce qu'elle a besoin de beaucoup de direction, de mise en scène, ou est-ce qu'elle elle fait plus ou moins, mais elle se dirige plus ou moins elle-même? <laughs> 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 Ask her. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah, sure. Je pense que nous, ce qu'on fait, d'abord dans, 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 euh, dans les répétitions, ce qui nous intéressait, c'est on fait ça avec tous les comédiens. On n'a pas travaillé différemment avec Marion, mais avec les autres, les autres comédiens. Well, I think that in the rehearsal process, I mean, the way we work with Marion, we, we work the same with her as we work with all of the other actors. Et ce que nous essayons de faire, c'est vrai qu'on essaie de, pendant ces cinq semaines de répétition, de trouver ce que va être la forme du film, par exemple, les plans séquences. I mean, and it's true, during those five weeks of rehearsal, we try to find what's going to be the form, the structure of the film, for instance, the sequential shots. Et... En même temps, ce qu'on fait, ce qui se passe avec les comédiens pendant ces cinq semaines, c'est qu'on essaie de les mettre le plus à nu et nous-mêmes aussi de se mettre le plus à nu possible. 
And what happens with the actors during these uh, five weeks is that we try to strip away their defenses as much as possible or totally, and the, us too, we also want to be naked vis-à-vis -vis the actors. Pour que les personnages puissent, puissent naître, puissent, puissent exister. So that the characters can, can, can be born, that they can start to emerge and exist. Donc, essayer d'enlever de, tout ce qui peut y avoir euh, de mauvais automatismes, de, de, on appelle ça d'attitude, quoi, de, de choses stéréotypées. De... So we want to strip the actors of any kind of mannerisms, tics, or stereotypical sort of character responses, etc. Et que le travail des comédiens, le plus important pour nous, c'est de sentir à un moment donné qu'ils sont présents et que leur travail ne va pas être un travail dans la performance. And the most important thing for us is to find that the actors really start to exist within the characters and that they are not in a performance mode. Et, et là, c'est un processus de travail dans lequel les comédiens sont et nous, nous sommes. Donc c'est un mixture. So it's a work process in which we are involved in and the actors are involved in, so it's a total mix. Et puis par ailleurs, on dit aussi quand même que ce serait bien de commencer la scène là et la finir là. Now we do say, you know, we do say, like, we'd like the scene to start here, we'd like to end it here. There is that you know, direct... That's our job. <laughs> it is, it is. You know. And you do it well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bonjour. Uh, for the brothers, Sandra's journey to approach all of her co-workers to keep her job, how does that mimic your own journey to find financiers mm -hmm. for your project? On n'a pas nos femmes, c'est un peu comme peut-être comme Manu, c'est ça. Well, our wives are maybe like Manu in the movie. Elles nous aident beaucoup. They help us a lot. No, ça n'a pas, il n'y a pas beaucoup de liens. There's not really much of a link. No, pas de liens. Um, I'm wondering, first of all, thank you. I Thanks, love Daniel. the film, very powerful and meaningful. I'm wondering if you could tell, speak a little bit more about the support of Manu for Sandra. It's very different from some of your earlier films where the main character has been sort of an outsider who doesn't have yeah. support. Oui, c'est vrai qu'ici, euh, dans ce film-ci, il y a une famille. Yeah, it's true. In this, in this film, there is a family. Une famille qui est unie. Dans nos autres films, euh, les gens sont plus seuls. Et les, 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 les adultes sont des gens souvent seuls. A functional family. I mean, a family that is really unified. In our other films, it's true that the, the characters are often much more alone. Et le personnage de Manu... Il nous a beaucoup aidé pour construire l'histoire parce que bon, on est à la fois hors de la maison et dans la maison, dans la maison ou dans la voiture ou dans le parc. Mais enfin, c'est plus c'est l'intime. Il y a le public et le private. <coughs> and Manu helped us enormously in terms of this film because he allowed us to be inside and outside, but always having the connection. Et alors avec Manu, on nous a semblé que c'était la première forme de solidarité qui est celle de, de, de d'un couple, d'un homme et d'une femme, dans, 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 dans leur maison, avec les enfants. Mais enfin, c'est surtout entre elle et lui. Et donc, nous, on s'est dit, voilà, il y a l'histoire de la solidarité avec les co-workers, mais il y a aussi celle avec son, son mari, qui est un peu son coach, celui qui va l'aider, qui va la relever. Et donc, on, on avait, et en même temps, l'histoire de la dépression. Donc, avec le mari, on pouvait... Donner un passé à Sandra, puisque quand elle dit euh, ça fait quatre mois qu'on n'a plus fait l'amour, bon, si ce n'est pas le mari qui est avec elle, on ne peut pas faire ce genre de scène. Donc, ça nous permettait de raconter l'histoire de Sandra d'avant le début du film, si vous voulez. You know, Manu a allowed several things. First of all, you know, he was that first element of solidarity, and he allowed us to tell things about the movie that preceded the movie, in a way. Um, it allowed us, you know, to link him with the depression, you know, there was that aspect, and then his, he was really the first uh, anchor of solidarity before the other workers. So it allowed us to go inside and outside, and to keep that connection going. Et en même temps, la, la, ce qu'il y a, c'est que même si Sandra est aimée par son mari, par ses enfants, qu'ils la reconnaissent, 
ça ne suffit pas. Aujourd'hui, les femmes, elles ne sont pas seulement à la maison, elles sont aussi dehors. Et il faut que dehors, on la reconnaisse aussi. Que dehors, ses coworkers lui disent, Sandra, on tient avec toi. Et ça, Manu, il le sait bien. L'amour su... euh, privé ne suffit pas. Il faut aussi celui de la société. Il faut le rapport, la reconnaissance dans la société. And also, it's that Manu, I mean, it's not enough, it's no longer enough today for the woman to have the love of her husband and her children and to have their approbation within the household. She also needs to, to be affirmed in the outside world. And Manu is very aware of that. And so he supports that in her journey to be recognized. She needs to be recognized by her co-workers, by society outside, not just inside the house. And he aids in that process. Bon feminist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, um, as she goes around making her case to her co-workers to reconsider and vote again in her behalf, um, she never mentions to any of them, I don't think, that she, I have children, you know, I need the money because I have children. She doesn't go down that, that road. No. She, she makes her case for everything else except for that. And I was just wondering, why was that? Ah, parce que, à un moment donné... Quand, Ma, quand Manu lui dit, il faut que tu ailles les voir un par un. Et quand ils vont te voir, ils vont changer d'avis. Et elle, elle lui dit, ah, mais je vais aller mendier. Oui. Um, well, because, uh, you know, at, at one point, when Manu says to her, you have to go out and see them one by one to try to get them to change your mind. And she says, well, no, I can't do that. That's like being a beggar. That's like begging. Okay. Mm -hmm. Et elle a un peu ce sentiment-là au début. Et nous, en tant que cinéastes, on s'est dit que si, si elle venait, par exemple, avec ses enfants, ou si elle parlait de ses enfants, ce n'est plus de la solidarité qu'elle demande. Ce n'est pas de la compassion qu'elle demande, c'est de la pitié. Et nous avons senti, comme filmmakers, vous savez, que c'était dans son caractère, que si elle venait et qu'elle commençait à parler de ses enfants, que ce n'était pas non plus, elle ne lui demandait plus de solidarité, elle lui demandait de pitié et de charité. Et ça, nous, on ne voulait pas ça. Il nous semblait que ce n'était pas... Et le personnage de Sandra, et c'est quelqu'un qui, quand elle va voir les autres, elle ne va pas là, même si ceux qui ne changent pas d'avis. Elle, elle leur dit aussi, je voudrais bien que tu te mettes à ma place, mais en même temps, je comprends que... Je te comprends que tu ne te mettes pas à ma place. Elle est, y a, y a en, en, le sous-texte du film, c'est qu'il y a une profonde solidarité avec tous ces gens, entre tous ces gens, même avec ceux qui ne changent pas d'avis. And we didn't want that, as filmmakers, we didn't want that for the film because the subtext, the undercurrent, is that when she goes and sees these people, even the people that did not agree with her, that voted against her, um, she's, saying, she's saying to them, put yourself in my shoes, put yourself in my place, but at the same time, she kind of understands their place. I mean, and that creates the undercurrent of a constant of solidarity that is throughout the, that theme throughout the film. Donc c'est pour ça qu'en même temps le film c'est pas un tribunal, hein, c'est pas là, c'est pas Sandra qui va voir les autres pour les juger et dire il est bon, il est pas bon, il est bon. Yeah, the film is not is not a, a trial. I mean, she's not going to see people and saying, okay, this is a good guy, this is a bad guy, and she goes there totally unjudgmental, unjudgmentally. Et là il y a pas de la place pour la pitié. And there's no room in that characterization for pity. Parce que c'est pas ça qu'elle va chercher. That's not what she's looking for. Um, as, as, as brothers, you've been directing films your entire life. Um, I'm wondering if you could talk about the other's style and strengths that uh, the audience might not know or that you both find in each other. No, we don't speak so much. <laughs> no, he knows my manière, comment on dit. He he know he knows my you know way of being. My psychic. I know his side. We don't speak a lot of. Just about the main character when we begin, when we start writing, but after that. Non, c'est pas, pas ça. ça la question. C'est la question, c'est vous travaillez ensemble. Non, je dis que je ne veux pas dire que les qualités que l'un on a ou qu'on n'a pas ensemble. Non, non, ah oui, parce qu'il dit des choses que eux ils ne connaissent pas, vous aimeriez pas. Non. Okay. Uh, the secret. 
<laughs> we, we have to keep something secret, no? <laughs> can, can I follow up on that question? Your second nature, of, which you're explaining, sort of knowing how each other works, do you feel that that comes from working with each other for so long, or because of your relation as brothers? I don't know. But je crois quand même qu'on peut pas faire ce qu'on fait si on n'est pas frère. I don't know, but, but I, I don't think you can do what we're doing if you're not brothers. Je crois que c'est ça quand même. On, on, nous, on, on, comment veux-je dire? On, on respecte, on se respecte et euh, on n'essaye pas d'avoir raison. De, je n'essaye pas d'avoir raison contre lui et lui contre moi. On, on partage le même film et voilà, euh, on, on essaie de, de faire en sorte que ce soit le meilleur film possible. Et, et pas d'avoir raison en faisant le film. Et ça, je pense qu'il faut une profonde, euh, un lien profond. Je ne dis pas qu'il faut qu'on soit fils et de la même mère et du même père, mais je veux dire, il faut quelque chose de l'enfance, à mon avis, qui nous tienne quand même. Yeah, I don't think, you know, neither of us are trying to be the one, it's not a, a contest about which one is right. Uh, but I think that there has to be, I'm not saying we necessarily have to have the same mother, but that there has to be... Or father. And father. But there needs to be, I believe, a profound link that goes back to childhood in order to work the way we work together. I see. Fascinating. Yeah. And we have time for one more question. I don't think Kate didn't have a chance. Go ahead. Thank you. Bonjour. Bonjour. Um, at the end of the film, ultimately the decision about whether Sandra keeps her job rests with her. How did you arrive at that conclusion? Parce que on, on a mis un peu de temps à, à, à trouver ce, cette fin. Et puis, finalement, si on veut rester cohérent avec le film, si on veut que nos propos qu'on essaie de, de tenir dans le film aient une cohérence, il faut que Sandra, effectivement, soit mise dans la même situation que ceux qu'elle est allée voir. C'est-à-dire, « Try to put yourself in my shoes ». It took a while for us to come up with that ending, but in order for it to come full circle, we needed Sandra to get to the point where she was put in the position that the others were put in, where she kept saying, put yourself in my shoes, and then she was in a position where she had to put herself in somebody else's shoes at the end. Et parce que, justement, elle put herself in their shoes, elle peut dire à la fin du film, quand elle sort, même si elle n'a pas obtenu ce, ce pourquoi elle a voyagé pendant deux jours et une nuit, elle peut dire, je suis heureuse, on s'est bien battu. And that's why, because she is, has come to the point where she was able to put herself in somebody's shoes, and make the decision that she made at the end of the film, she, that allows her to come out of it saying, I'm happy, and we really put up a good fight. And she speaks to her husband. And we are so optimistic. Ethical victory. Yeah. It's an ethical <laughs> victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is great. Well, right. Right. One more question. Um, Jean Jean, la, la chanson Gloria, was uh, that something that was attached to you, yeah. uh, or was that because it was a cheaper... No, no, no. And they're British too, right? No, no, no. No, we chose de Van Morrison, and he was very gentle with us. We chose this song because we love it, but also because it allows us to make the solidarity. Because there is the music, and then there are three, for the first time, they are three in the car, and they can reprend Gloria together. Well, we chose, um, first of all, we, uh, you know, we liked Van Morrison, and, and he was very, very nice with us. Um, but we chose that song because it allowed, in the car, it allowed, there was a, re a refrain, and for the three to then have that moment of solidarity where they sing together. And uh, Van Morrison was really kind. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.